Pakistan's opposition leader Imran Khan's house in Lahore remains surrounded by police. The 70 year old veteran politician said earlier that police were preparing to detain him again. Khan was arrested last week in connection with a corruption case. On Thursday, Pakistan's Supreme Court ruled that arrest was illegal. Well, joining us now from Lahore is Imran Khan, a former Prime Minister of Pakistan. And Mr Khan, welcome to the programme. Could you give us, first of all, an update of your situation? Are you still anticipating arrest at this time? Well, <clears throat> my house is surrounded by the police. Uh, basically, they've cut my house off uh, from the main roads. And, uh, and there was a police statement that there were 40 terrorists hiding in my house, so they were going to come and search for these terrorists. So I've invited everyone, the media and everyone, to come and look for these terrorists which are supposed to be hiding in my house. I believe it's just a pretext for them to again conduct a raid and pick me up. So you say that those, those people that they suggest are uh, involved in the uh, violence of last week are not at your property? They're, what they're saying is that once I was uh, abducted, and I use the word abducted, confirmed by the Supreme Court, unlawfully picked up from within the precincts of the Islamabad High Court, uh, there was a reaction in the public. We believe that any independent investigation will show that the people who came out for, for me were peaceful protesters, as they have been for 27 years. There were some people we believe were inserted in there which created arson. And that's what has given them the reason to crack down on us. Seven and a half thousand of our people are in jail today. All my top leadership is in jail. So the you say, you case, say, sir, you say that your supporters are not responsible in any way for the violence. And in fact, it was other elements that, who do not belong to the party or do not support you that caused the damage and violence instead. Is that what you're saying? I, what I'm saying, Nick, this was deliberate. And you have to know the background. The audience must, must know why. The reason is that the, the rating of my political party is 70% today. 70% compared to all the other parties, which are 13, 10% and so on. And so this is the election year. And, uh, and all the parties plus the establishment wants me to be removed from the ele ele electoral field. And to do that, they have been 150 cases already on me. They've been trying to put me in prison before. Yeah, I, un I understand what you're saying. I understand level. what you're saying. But, but I just want to get to the bottom of this, the fact that, you know, hundreds of police officers were injured and officials were seriously injured. And you're seriously suggesting that they were injured by their own side? No, I, what I'm saying is that for 27 years, we have been holding protests, over, like any political party does. When I was shot and I named one of the military intelligence officers one of the three suspects. Why, why were there no burning and arson or anything? There were protests, but none of our, there were peaceful protests, but there was nothing like what happened now. What happened right now was that this was a deliberate, these, the arson I'm talking about, the arson was committed deliberately. 25 people died in this. 700 people got bullet wounds, all of our supporters, all, and if there's any independent inquiry, you will find that there were peaceful protesters. And the arson was done. Already the evidence is coming out. In social media days, you can't hide it. All right. They're well, let's, already let's bringing see out evidence. Uh, as and when and if there's an investigation, we'll see what, what the, the reality was. But do you not feel that by uh, calling your supporters out to protest, you are effectively inciting violence? Look, Nick... I mean, which democracy does not allow people to protest peacefully when they think they've been wronged? Name me a democracy. Uh, when I'm picked up unlawfully, I was on bail, they could not pick me up. They grabbed me, not just grabbed me, but they beat up people, people got injured. They took me like, like an ordinary uh, terrorist. What did you think? Would there not be a reaction? Would there not be peaceful protest on that? There were always going to be protests. But what I'm saying is that the arson was not us. 
And I can again say that whenever there's independent investigation, it will be proved that it wasn't us. You, uh, of course, were given bail by the Supreme Court. Do you not then have faith in Pakistan's judicial system? The only thing that is holding together Pakistan's democracy is our judicial system. This is the only thing. Otherwise, what is happening now is people come out, get bail from one case, immediately there's police which grabs them and, and takes them in for some other case. How can seven and a half thousand people be in jail? How can all the top leadership in, be in jail? At least they must prove some, there must be some evidence that they were involved in some wrongdoing. All my people have always been told to protest peacefully. And I have all the statements. From 27 years, I've always said, stay between the constitution and the law. Do not, do not indulge in any violence. And, and it, we, our party is known for that. So how come suddenly they started burning down buildings? We have evidence that there were people planted inside who did that. Where is the nation going to find resolution here? Two sides are so polarized, the country is divided. Where is resolution coming from? Look, Nick, there is only one solution. This is an election year. The elections cannot be held beyond October. So three months before the elections, uh, the, the, government, the government gets dissolved, so which is another two, two and a half months. Now, that is the solution. But unfortunately, what is happening is that the government is running away from elections. There were supposed to be provincial assembly elections in 70% of Pakistan, according to the constitution, ruled by the Supreme Court. The government refused. So they've already violated the constitution because they're scared of losing the elections. Who, finally, Imran Khan, are you blaming? Is it, is it the government or the army, the military? Who do you think is behind this? Well, well, you know, the, of course, the 12-party coalition, which is in government, but they were brought in government by the ex-army chief. So the military means one man, army chief, because it's not a democratic institution. So basically what he decides goes. So what is happening right now clearly is that the, neither the military establishment, which means one man, nor these 12 parties, they're too scared for elections because they're scared I will win. So because of that, uh, you know, they're doing everything to make sure that I get out of the race. I have had two assassination attempts on me. One was where I was hit, one where I, uh, I was lucky to be alive because just, you know, I got saved, thank God. So this is the issue, 150 cases on me. Someone who has not had one criminal case in the last few months has 150 cases, including 15 criminal cases in a day, 40 terrorist cases. So, I mean, this is all to get me out of the race. Uh, actually, well, I'm going to throw one more question at you. In the past, you, you have blamed the United States for in, inciting all of this. Do you still think that's the case? Well, what, was, what we now subsequently discovered, well, l let me get, give you the background. My, our ambassador, Pakistan ambassador, when I was the prime minister in Washington, he had a meeting with a U.S. official, official meeting, and the cipher, the secret message which came to me, was that the U.S. official said that unless you remove Imran Khan as your prime minister, there'll be consequences to Pakistan. Uh, but later on, we discovered that it didn't originate from there. Our ex-army chief had fed the Americans against me and called me anti-American. We just, all this came out later on. So it, it was initiated from here. The Americans were told how I was anti-American and, and then came the cipher. All right, we'll leave it there. Imran Khan, former Prime Minister of Pakistan, thank you. Thank you.